Oh yeah, George turned up tonight. Hey, George. Yeah, what an episode. So a lot of our friends are out of town for Coachella this week. So we have a lot of um, out of town people coming to visit us instead, which is actually really cool. Right, people that hate music. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they like music, but it's awesome that they're also here for other stuff. So before we um, did our community round table tonight, I wanted to draw attention to the fact that on Tuesday we had the blood moon and I'm not sure if anyone actually saw that, but it was pretty awesome. And the photo that you see behind me is actually done by one of our awesome volunteers here and he never gets enough credit. His name is Alan, and uh, we just wanted to give a quick shout out to him because... Yeah, super humble guy and yet he takes amazing photos like this so yeah I look forward to you photographing the the other blood moons that are going to be happening this year so definitely keep an eye out for them he's our oh really maybe may the official iPad or the maybe astronomer for downtown podcast yeah I want to yeah. learn how to take actual photos with these things because they seem so like clumsy to use <laughs> <laughs> anyway um before we start talking to people, I wanted to do the fortune cookie. And so we're getting Tanya to do the fortune cookie this week. Awesome. So I'll get you to randomly take one. Yeah. Awesome, and we get our fortune cookie bearer, Alan, to come out. That looks like a good one. Ooh. Awesome, thank you, Alan. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be talking about Sin Shop this episode for the first part of our round table. So I hear that you're going to be doing something for the very first time. Yep. And I'm what's that? Be soldering um, something together. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> um, so first of all, Sin Shop is a hackerspace here in downtown Las Vegas. It's a member-run co-op. Um, we teach things, among them soldering chocolate making, uh, sewing, things like that. Um, so today we're gonna teach Dylan to solder for the first time. And we have a sound to light visualizer. So basically, uh, if it works out, um, by next episode we'll have like another little applause meter up here. And if you guys yell real loud, hopefully the lights will light up. And <laughs> right, well. you gotta be reacting to them, so. And this um, is not a drill. Like, Dylan has not soldered before. We didn't do a run through. And so as long as we don't set fire to the desk, <laughs> I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah, it should be fine. Fine. So we have this little board here. I'm not here. playing stupid. I am stupid. We have the components. They're all marked out here. They're marked out here. There's instructions inside. So we, we won't mess this up. Awesome. Um, so the important thing to know about soldering is um, it's melting a softer metal, uh, the solder, uh, which is usually a tin alloy, um, in order to make contact between uh, two harder metals, usually the copper clad on the board and like the little metallic legs. Um, so okay, why don't we start out with, um, with maybe like one of these LEDs. Um, so you can see this is a, a red LED. It's basically like a, a tiny little light bulb. Um, and one side of it is flat. Fireman's hat. Um, and then there are four little spaces marked out here for the LEDs. So if you'd like to find the flat area and pop it in. Okay, so I just stick it through those little holes. Yep, l find the flat area on the LED and line it up to the flat area on the board. <laughs> so how'd your first one go? Okay. It wasn't too bad. I was actually 15, so I like probably didn't Susan have is my a veteran over solder. Here. Really? Uh, <laughs> this is a soldering iron. It's got a hot end 15. and a cold end, and you want to hold on to the cold end. Um, Definitely don't grab it by the pointy yeah. end. That's going to be really hot. Uh, this is a metallic <laughs> sponge. You clean the soldering iron first. Oh, I thought that to was get metal. anything okay. on there. Well, it's well, it's a metallic sponge. It sort of scrubs off the bits. Sometimes you can also, you also clean, clean the kitchen sponge. with it. You can. <laughs> it's like a Brillo pad. This is the solder. Um, and so the other important thing to note is if, if, uh, if either of the parts is cold, it's not going to make a good joint. So what you want to do is you want to touch the, uh, the soldering iron to both parts. So I'm touching it to the, can you see, to the copper yes. and, and one of the legs of the lead. And instead of heating up the solder directly, you're just going to touch the solder and sort of like get in between there. Oh, you're melting this little thing on it? Yep. A little wire. Okay. So there you go. And now that's it. Uh, He's done. Now it's soldered. Then the only thing that remains is to snip okay. off the extra leg. <laughs> so you hold it and you just snip it off. Okay, easy enough, easy enough. Now why would somebody want to solder? This, Dylan. Now, what's the point of all this? It's like to make an make... electrical connection between a component and a wire or a trace in the, uh, in the PC board like that. So this could become a robot. Um, or a light meter, yeah. <laughs> and how to do this at Go do it! <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like golfing, you know, like 
<laughs> it's sort of like eating a pipe when you go. Anybody in the audience can do this. Um, you just need a soldering iron and solder. But um, if you come to Sin Shop and sign up for one of the classes, um, I think they're what, 10, 15 bucks or something like that. Yeah. They're really Depends. cheap. Um, you show up for a couple hours and you leave. Did you smoke? Did you smoke like that? Okay. It smoke's okay. Like this, right? <laughs> At this stage, the smoke's okay. And you leave as a solder, a soldering person, so a we've, solderman. We've had some really cool workshops. So one of my favorite workshops was learning how to make up your own power supply, so you can power other electronics. And that sounds like super dangerous, but That's it's actually cool. really cool. And at the end of the day, you get to take home something that works out too much? out of your class. So yeah. we have a so lot of really cool hands-on stuff where so you actually get to take it home. Just melt it, melt it down to the to the circuit. Yo, see, you're doing really good. Mm, that's not a Pablo sand, but no, 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 we're working on it. From it's a distance, at least Susan cool. thinks it looks good. <laughs> cool. Good. Yeah. Can I get a round of applause, please? <laughs> what do you say about that? <laughs> All right. So I think we should let Dylan yeah, continue to solder, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll move it to Susan. To Before we move it though, oh. um, how can people get involved? Like, if they want to sign up for a class, or if they want to do a tour of the hackerspace to see what it's all about, how can they do that? That's a fantastic point. Um, so you can check out our website at synshop.org. It's s-y-n-s-h-o-p.org. Um, stop by. There's uh, open hours at the top of the website. Um, it's most cool. days, except for Tuesdays and Sundays, from 6 to 11 or so, but check the website to make sure. If you stop by, uh, there'll be happy people there, um, right. overjoyed to give you a tour. Um, and you can also uh, link to, or the, the website is linked to our uh, meetup.com page. It has a list of all the classes. So. Cool, that's fun. That's awesome. And yeah, Dylan, we hope yeah. to see you in there because you're already, already on your way. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, I will let you practice your soldering while I talk to Tanya. <laughs> so we are really excited to welcome Tanya back on the Downtown Podcast. She was here last time promoting the Sprinkler Sprint. And what's awesome is that it was a raging success. You're bringing it back again this time. And you had over 16, uh, 1,600 people like running through the Sprinkler Sprint last time, right? And you had all sorts of awesome things like you were handing frozen popsicles to people as they were running through the race and all that kind of thing. So like, why don't you tell me about what you've got planned for this sprinkler sprint? Yeah, so our inaugural um, event was the sprinkler sprint. It was our first race ever as the company, and it was a huge success. We had actually 1,652 runners in the race. <laughs> oh my goodness. And they did, they traversed through all these water obstacles. You go through misting tunnels, um, cannon blaster zones. Um, you just get blasted with water the whole time, and you finish <laughs> on a huge, epic slip and slide, inflatable slip and slide. So we did add a few new elements this year. Um, we have um, rain towers. We have the new hydrant club where they're going to be spraying hoses out of that gigantic hydrant <laughs> on 9th and Fremont Street. Oh, that cool. is awesome. It's going to be really cool. And then um, we also are going to do a bubble tunnel this year. So you're I running really through want to do the bubble tunnel. really skinny tunnel, but like thousands and thousands and thousands of bubbles blowing all over you. It's going to be a great Kodak moment. <laughs> um, and then instead of popsicles this time, we actually did get a great sponsor. The Hawaiian Shaved Ice Truck is coming out. And they're giving everyone like eight ounce ices on the course. So you that run in. That's awesome. what's unique about downtown runners is we give a treat on the course. That is so good. And I'm so wrapped that the slip and slide finish line is coming back again because I heard that was very popular. And yes. like I know Pavel went down the slip and slide last year. So. There's a video up on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, we did. We're actually getting a real slide. Like you climb up the ladder and you come down a slide and then one that you just slip and slide right through. So you have an option to go in which lane you that's want. Awesome. That's fantastic. What are you doing? It's for little kids, isn't it? No. Well, oh. maybe. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it's for, the sprinkler sprint and adults, is, it's it's definitely it's walker friendly sign sign. and kid friendly, and just it's kids. not just for kids. It's actually we want 20 to 30, 40 year, year olds coming in, just Fantastic. having such a fun time with their families and their friends. Awesome! And you're like kind of aiming for like even more people this time, so you'd love to see 2,000 people there, right? Yes, uh -huh. bring it on! I mean, <laughs> we can do this. This is going to be an epic water fight in downtown Las Vegas, and I think we can get 2,000 people out there. Okay, so we got to just spread the word. Well, I hear tonight you're actually going to help that along and you might actually be giving away some tickets. Yes. I, I love being the founder of my own company because I just give things away. So I did bring some Dry Fit Downtown Runners t-shirts because I want people to wear my brand around town. Awesome. Um, so I do have a little thing though. Um, everybody has Twitter, so I want everyone to tweet at Downtown Runners. I want a free ticket and hashtag Sprinkler Sprint 
and hashtag DT runners when you do that. And then um, we're going to pick someone today from the live audience to win a shirt. And then um, on April 26th, I'm going to be um, picking a random winner. Um, and so all the YouTube watchers right now can also participate in this. I love that because I was so, going to say, what about our people that, that are awesome and they can't make it to our taping, but they also watch from home yes. so they can get a ticket as well? Out. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And then I hear you're also going to be maybe asking the audience some trivia questions just yes. in case to see if anybody knows the answer and they can win a ticket too. Yes. Well, you can win a t-shirt. So okay. I did have a trivia question. You obviously know the sprinkler sprint water race is one of our uh, races, but I didn't know if anyone else knew what other downtown runners event we put on this past January. And it sounds like a lot of you are from out of town, but are there any locals here that know the answer? What was the race that we put on in January? I can see Dan at the back. He's thinking. Sprinkler Sprints. Yes! Yes! yes. Kathy! <laughs> we did the yeah. Sprint Poker Run! <laughs> so yay! You win a shirt, Miss Kathy from Rachel's <laughs> Kitchen! <laughs> Awesome, not only does she sponsor our, our beer, yeah. but she also gets to take a prize home, that's great. And then the other uh, the other prize that we're giving away is for another person in the audience, yes, right? Yes, some lucky winner in the audience is going to leave with a shirt today. It's the person holding the I Heart Downtown Runner sign, so who's that Dylan. lucky winner? <laughs> nice, Dylan! There you go, nice prize shirt for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. And we'll be checking the Twitter feed later on to see um, who's been tweeting in our audience. And then you're yes. going to give another one away later on too after people watch the taping. And that's next weekend, right? Yes. So I'm going to um, draw, a, I'm just going to randomly select someone from Twitter and uh, announce it. I'll um, tweet it out so you'll know who um, the winner is and then I'll get you your free ticket into the race. That is awesome. Yeah. So for, for those <laughs> who have already bought a ticket and need reminding or for those who are going to buy a ticket, what, what is the date okay, that it's so, happening? Yeah, the race is Saturday, June 7th, and it starts at 9 a.m. And we're starting and stopping at the Container Park on Fremont Street. And uh, you can check everything out on our website at downtownrunners.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming yeah. in and talking again. Thank I'm like you. super excited to see all the photos from the bubble tunnel, especially. Yeah. So yeah, I it's going to be really awesome. Excited. Thanks so much for having me back again. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, week. thank you to our two guests, Pavel and Tanya, for the community segment. Oh, sorry. Thank yeah, you. thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for bringing all this out. That's fun. I do, it's very exciting. You let that just rage through you. It's I know, I'm letting it soak in a little bit. Uh, it's cool. We must be extroverts, you know? We just feed that energy out. I know, I like it. All right, so I am proud to introduce to you our next guest who was diagnosed with OCD in 2005, and she is the owner and creator now of myocddiary.com. And you had a great experience just being a TEDx UNLV speaker. So please put your hands together for Julia Brintz. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I guess you've lived with it and you've been able to pull some strengths out of it. But the main thing is, I guess I just don't understand OCD. And like, I'd like you to help try to get uh, an understanding. Is, is it a spectrum where like, I don't know, because I can't work without my desktop icons being right. organized. Is it a spectrum that goes like down that until it becomes something that hurts your life? Or is it a completely different kind of problem? Well, that's a really good question. I mean, people think of anxiety and depression in terms of, I guess, common language. So when people get kind of anxious or sad when, you know, something bad happens, like they didn't get to the yogurt store before it closed, they're like, I'm so depressed. And honestly, that's not truly what it means to be depressed. That just means that you're kind of bummed. Right. So OCD does kind of work like that. So it falls on the spectrum of mild to moderate to severe to extreme. So on the extreme side, uh, have you heard of Howard Hughes? Mm -hmm. He's the aviator dude, right. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, played him in the movie. So the deal was that he actually had it so extreme that he was completely not functional. He was stuck in his house, like completely just struggling with this disorder. And he would close up himself in his room. He would save his urine in jars. He didn't cut his toenails. And unfortunately, his staff actually took total advantage of this. And they would purposely make him uncomfortable by touching his food. So they would keep him, uh, he would make them do it again. And they would have more hours to work 
get more pay. Oh, no. So yeah, <laughs> isn't that terrible? Um, and uh, more on the mild side, that's where people get tripped up. They're like, oh, well, I'm kind of anal retentive, and I like things clean, so does that mean I have OCD? Well, not exactly, because that means you have a personality and everybody's got one. So the difference is between a personality or a quirk and a disorder is that it, one impairs your life. It, it just totally, it's about your ability to function in, in daily life. So if you just like things organized and you have this method to doing it and it's just kind of quirky, then it's not a disorder because there's no chaos going for you. You're just particular, you know. But if you actually are struggling with it and there's anxiety pushing you to make this perfect and follow the lines up on the table, that's a little different. Like if you're not comfortable with your beer like that and it's gonna drive you crazy and you're just like really upset and you can't get it together, like that's a little different. So it seems like your mind's just stuck on it. It's like and yeah. you're like intelli and then once it becomes like to the perfect angle then you can continue on with your thoughts? Sometimes yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just like a bunch of little roadblocks to getting to like normal exactly. Mm -hmm. thoughts. Okay. So could you walk me through, like, in your mind, how it works? Like, a, if you have a specific example, especially, like, where you got caught and you were like, this yeah. is OCD and this is hurting my life. Yeah, sure. So uh, getting dressed was a really hard thing for me to do. Oh, okay. So I needed... So many design options? Or... I know, right? I was like, oh, my gosh, so many clothes to No, actually, what happened... <laughs> girl, <though. laughs> no, um, my problem was that I believed if I had a negative thought, like if something popped into my mind, like everybody has thoughts that just intrude into the brain. So what, you know, maybe you're just standing there and you think, oh God, like I hope nothing bad happens to my little sister. You know, you just bypass that thought and it goes away. But with OCD, your mind loops around that thought and you can't let it go. So if I was picking out a shirt one day in the morning and I pick out the shirt and at the same time I think, oh no, like something might happen to my little sister. And then I can't wear this shirt anymore because for some reason my mind's telling me that if I wear this shirt while I'm thinking this thought, then oh, I will make it happen. Oh, yeah. Gosh. So the thoughts feel really real because there's so much anxiety behind that thought. There's no way it can't be real. That's what it feels like. So I would not be able to wear this shirt. And then sometimes I would be like, okay, cool. I got the shirt on. I'm good. But then I'd have another bad thought. And I'd have to take the shirt off and try again. So then um, I was married at the time, so my husband would come in the room and he'd be like, are you okay? I'm like, no, I, I can't get dressed. <laughs> I'm stuck, I'm in this pile of clothes. And so he would have to come in and pick out my outfit for me every day because if I did it myself, I, I would just get stuck in my closet. I mean, could you see so. that in yourself and just like close your eyes and you need to mow or? Oh, it just, it not? It, you know, that's the thing that's totally weird about OCD is that it really can't be outsmarted. You know, it's something that logic does not work around. You know, you can tell yourself, all day right, like there's no way that no one will die you know you can say all that but your mind is yeah. yeah it's just so strong that you know it's ridiculous like the whole time you feel completely crazy and you know that there's no rationale behind it yeah. but it's so strong that you're like I just I can't help it and that's why it feels almost like you're two people because you have like your normal brain and then you have your OCD brain and usually the OCD brain is gotcha. so you can actually feel like oh I'm in an OCD moment now yeah. and I'm kind of back it's been a bit a while since I've had one of those moments and then it kicks in yeah it just kicks in and then after you've a lot of times there's rep repetition so like I might need to do this a certain amount of times and then I can't stop till I've done it like 80 times you know so I'm doing this I'm counting I could even talk to you while counting because that's how it goes yeah. so I could do that I'm okay I don't have to do it but yeah, there was a yeah. time where I did okay. and I could do that yeah, and then oh, no, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I would do that and then after a while I'm like okay that that felt right I hit 80 and it my anxiety is low enough so I, I guess I did it right but if I hit 80 and it still didn't feel right I'd be like I have to go again and I have to do it again. And I might be here for hours doing that, even though there's no reason besides the fact that I just don't feel okay. Right. So. Now, what, a minute ago when you were saying like sometimes it feels like one thing triggers another, like you're like, if I don't get the right outfit, then my little sister will get hurt. Is, it, is mm -hmm. everything triggered to something else or is sometimes you just have to hit 80, hit 80? Or does it always like, I gotta hit 80 or else? Something will uh, happen? That's a good question. That... Um, a lot of times it is triggered, the anxiety is triggered by a thought. But sometimes you've just done whatever it was so many times that you already know it's gonna happen. Like I might wake up in the morning and it's just, now it's part of my ritual that I had to flip the light switch on 20 times. Even though I didn't have a thought, I've just had to do that the last few years, so I just have to do it now, even though there's no thought there. So you create these patterns, but I might get anxious if I don't do that. Right. And I'll anticipate that, so I have to go do it anyways. So. Is it uh, so? When you looked into OCD, is there a segment of the population that has it? If so, what segment is like? What's the number on that? And is there special verticals where people with OCD are excelling at, or oh, yeah. anything like that? 
Um, they think it's about 2% of the people have it. And it's not just a you know American disease. People kind of think that, but it's kind of all over. Um, but they've also found, some studies have shown that people with OCD tend to be of higher intelligence. Yeah, I'm really smart. Oh, yeah, you can. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I believe it. It's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, they tend to be more empathic because they're so sensitive to what they're feeling, and they don't ever want to hurt anybody. They're always trying to protect everything because they're afraid. Uh, okay. So they tend to be very aware and very Is that how you like, concerned. Like you're emotional, like more so, more yeah. than most people. Yeah, it's almost like the emotions are, are um, if you can imagine like coming out of a concert and you're like, I can't really hear anything because it was so loud in there. Right. So it's kind of like Jay-Z's out of control. Yeah. Exactly, Jay-Z's out of control. So it's like when the volume's so high, after a while it feels normal. But when you first walk in, it's really loud. Right. So same with emotions. With OCD, your emotions are so high. Uh, it becomes your baseline. Sort yeah. Of. So then when that goes up or down, it's just it's completely not in parallel with anyone else that you know doesn't have that kind of yeah. experience. Gosh, two percent of the population, and is it genetic or? Yeah, there's a genetic component to it. Um, I did a study with, or I was one of those. Um, I, did, I participated in some research for Johns Hopkins where they were trying to find if there was a genetic component, and they did find one. So um, one of the the cert genes, I forget which one, but there is something in there that relates to it, and it's got a lot of connection with other. It's comor comorbid is um, with. Let's see what else. Substance abuse, depression, other anxiety disorders, um, eating disorders, um, all kinds of stuff. They kind of overlap a lot of times. Does anybody in the audience know anybody with OCD? Like, is, like real OCD? One person knows it? Okay. You said, yeah, if it's about right. So, um, what is uh, some ways that dealing with OCD made you stronger? Like, what are the lessons, like, dealing with some of those struggles that everybody could learn from? Well, you know, for years, doctors told me that there wasn't a cure that I, my OCD was so severe that I was not one of the ones that would be helped very much by therapy. And I wasn't really happy with that because to me that was someone saying that I couldn't do something and I don't like hearing that. So um, I, I decided just to go forward and push and that's why I started my blog and I was like, I'm gonna figure this out, I'm gonna do something. And so I think from that I learned that, I mean to me if I could get over something like that then I, it just kind of showed me that I'm stronger than I thought I was. Yeah. And I'm definitely super clean, which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, realistically, I think that going through what I went through, I can't look back and think it was for nothing. I have to believe that there was something I could get out of it, you know? So that's why I did start my blog, because I want to help other people that are going through this. Yeah. And So you feel totally yeah. over it? You're cured? Um, you know, OCD is not something that you actually truly get cured of typically. It's more like a virus. You, but your life is yeah. together. Yeah, like it's dormant. Thank Good you. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Back to regular life. Okay, so yeah. um, I, so you've got, a, you've got a blog and a YouTube channel, and you have great mm -hmm. videos on there. Um, it's myocddiary.com. And on Twitter, you're my OCD Diary USA. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, I hopped on there, and one of the first videos I saw was uh, about a method you were using that was called journaling. Mm -hmm. um, I just for the last con the last question, if you could just explain journaling, because it seems like it might have it might help anybody who's ruminating on a problem. Yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. And you know, journaling people think it's just creative writing or free thought. But there's actually a structure to it, and if you know the structure, it's a lot easier to get into it because I was never one for, for writing down just like how I was doing in that day. It, to me, it's a little, I couldn't get there. But with journaling, you kind of, uh, I can actually tell you a little exercise that kind of helps yeah, to yeah, start. So basically what you do is you start out writing um, 10 emotions you have. You can't say angry, mad, or sad, or happy. You know, those are too simple, they're a bit rudimentary. Right. So you want to stick with things like frustrated, disappointed, um, elated, euphoric, whatever. So you pick 10, you rate them on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the most severe and how you're feeling that emotion, and then you describe what it feels like without judgment. Okay. So for example, I might say, oh, I'm nervous, I might rate that a 4, I feel it mostly in my stomach, it feels kind of like butterflies, it sort of kicked in in the afternoon, also I, it's making me just sort of unhappy and it's triggering these other thoughts and it's related to this, so you do that. Um, you do that for about a week, and that will increase your emotional complexity in terms of your language and how you are able to articulate your emotions. Because oftentimes we end up separating the, like, these are good emotions, these are bad emotions. Mm -hmm. And then you've got these emotions that are kind of in the middle that aren't, like, really great or that bad. And then you end up just sort of, like, lumping them with one or the other because you don't have that sort of articulation. So when oh, you right, increase right. your vocabulary, yeah, you, yeah, okay. yeah, you create a webbing which is a lot 
um, easier to, you know, to structure. So once you have that down, then you can start journaling. And that's where you can actually go in. And I, I say do it every day for 30 days. It's easier to create a habit after 30 days. Yeah. Um, so you go in, and then that's when you sort of write down, like, hey, this is going on. And the idea is that you don't let anybody see it, because you will censor yourself if you know that someone's going to read it. Right, so, so you've got to be honest. OK. You've got to be honest. All right. Um, well, hopefully everybody should. Uh, and you have, I'm sure you have people with OCD following you, right? I mean, oh, you yeah. built a good community of people that you're helping? Do you feel like you're helping the world, kind of? I hope so. I That's do, definitely I, the goal. Sure, sure <laughs> okay, so yeah, myocddiary.com. I think maybe we should give her one of our famous cheers. Oh, cheers! Yeah. Oh. Yes, we are. At the end of this month, we're going to be opening up on the campus of the Cleveland Clinic, Lou Ruvo Brain Center for Health at Bonneville and um, Grand Central Parkway. It's going to be a new concept for us. It's a grab and go. Uh, we'll be serving a limited menu of our salads, our sandwiches, wraps. Uh, we'll be making our fresh juices, smoothies, coffee drinks. So we are so excited. Thank you. It is. It's a little cafe dead center in the middle of the campus. Uh, it's all outdoor seating. You'll walk up to a window, place your order, take your food, seat. Um, parking is phenomenal there. It's free parking all over the campus. So we, we hope you come check us out. Yes, we certainly will. Now, this is a brain clinic, and April is sandwiched in between two months. We've got, we got March, which is National Brain Awareness Month, and then we have May, which is uh, National Mental Health Month. So that really resonates with not just the clinic, though, but with you on a very personal level and partly why you're opening up this new grab and go at this location. Would you mind sharing with them? Yeah, thank you so much. My father passed away in 2005 of dementia and Alzheimer's. 
the clinic opened up in 2009, and I, I just look at how his life could have been so much better, and, and, and he could have lived a happier, longer life with a clinic like this that, um, that he would have been able to have access to. So it was um, a very natural progression in my life to be able to do something on a campus like that. That's really beautiful, and I feel like his memory and spirit will be there every it day to grab and go. That's, yes. that's really nice. Well, thank you so much for sharing your openness and, you. and, and this new location. I'm excited about it. We're all going to go, right? We're all going to go. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Uh, well, again, on that holiday, happy holidays. Thank you so much. I am actually here with Joe Brown. And Joe, what's your Twitter handle? Okay. Uh, Joe Crawford Five. Is it the same on Instagram as well? No, it's uh, Fago Joe. Fago underscore Joe. Okay, good. So you gotta hit him up and follow him. And uh, he's earned that because he's gonna tell us what the fortune of the week for downtown tech is. Okay. Uh, you dress for a downtown affair accordingly, but nobody care. That is actually really close. Like, really That's the first close. time it's close, maybe. Yeah, I think so. So it's actually, you will find yourself poorly dressed for an occasion, but no one who matters will care. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's the closest we've ever got to it being the actual fortune. So yeah, you should be super proud of yourself. Are you from out of town or are you local? Yes, I'm from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Awesome, and you're having a good time in Las Vegas? Have a fabulous time. Awesome, thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Tag.